How's it going? Andrew here and welcome to the Creative Endeavor podcast. This is the podcast bringing you inspiring stories from creative professionals from around the world. And in this episode, I'm catching up with an old friend of mine, Cesar Santos. And in fact, you might remember that Cesar was number one for this podcast way back when I first started this series. So it's great to have an opportunity to catch up with Caesar again and find out how he's doing in the face of this lockdown quarantine and what are some of the things that he's doing artistically. So without further ado, here's Caesar Santos in The Creative Endeavor. Well, Caesar, welcome back to the Creative Endeavor podcast. It is an absolute pleasure to have your company once again. Man, Andrew, thank you so much for this talk. I think we need to talk more than ever, uh, especially, you know, we're messengers and we're communicating to ourselves as we speak. So it's good to to kind of think out loud with a, with a friend. Yeah, man, absolutely, absolutely. Look, let's just jump right into it. Um, how are you doing over there in Miami? How are you finding this current situation? And what are some of the things that you're doing to, to cope with the, the world the way it is? Um, well, man, all good. My family's good. Um, at the beginning, I'm like, okay, it, it sounds like it's going to be the same. Uh, but then after a week, I found myself walking around the studio, <laughs> uh, not being the same as before. So I'm, I was wondering what was the difference because, because superficially it looked like if, if I was having the same life, I mean, and we hardly go out, we work me and my wife work together but uh, just knowing that outside there is so many people changing their lives suddenly and businesses closing and even like workers having to change all that affects me at least um so it's another chance to see how we are all connected because in this time of abundance because i we lived a little bit in a crisis in cuba for my first 12 years of life there and 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 without noticing it in the states with all the abundance you become more an individual that has all these independent thoughts and and activities and suddenly i find myself um thinking man going back to that connection and saying it's funny how things that happen outside can be part of your psyche and can influence it you know um, so that's been changing and I'm still thinking and wondering what this whole thing is about for me, you know? Yeah, it, it is. I, actually, I, I can relate a hundred percent. I find myself again, you know, pacing around the studio, thinking about the good old days, um, and, and kind of going, wow, it, what an interesting time. And I think, you know, I, I try to, I try to stay on the positive side, Caesar, where I kind of think, okay, maybe maybe there's a blessing here maybe there's something here that i can shift my focus to and maybe there's something here as, as an opportunity some something i can learn you know it's very interesting though hearing about your background because you you would have noticed that did you were you ever afraid that something like your experience in cuba could could happen again in your adult life or did you think when you came to america that's it hey man i'm you know free sailing from here no, yeah. I mean, I learned that life is by the day. Uh, uh, that's what I learned in Cuba. And and I, I kind of apply it even to this other system. And I know that it's day by day and you have to kind of be positive regardless of the situation because you have to be the one responsible in your mind that you can be like that hero that you're looking for and become that hero. So in a way, I'm adapted to kind of look at situations as they happen. And I don't sell, I don't put even um, sections, even in history, like when I study history, I try to see it overlapping and with now, and I, I believe like since time is a little bit of an invention in our minds, if we don't segment it, we can put it all together and then it, is, it makes a different kind of sense uh, that has to do also with the present. So, so that's what I've been doing, but definitely uh, recently, even in recent years, I've been wondering more like if a system so amazing as the, as the system that gives opportunity to people um, to express themselves however they want. I mean, pretty much compared to other systems. And and that is kind of now totally changed. Like if you look at it, like if you wouldn't call it a crisis with this type of virus, it feels almost like in the Cuban situation in that sense, because you're always like looking out 
and see what's the next opportunity almost like an animal like uh, you know it's very strange yeah yeah I mean it's it's a strange experience just to go to the grocery store and have to wait in line and, and know, wait wait, wait, wait for people to come out and then you get to go in and keep away and people you know covering their faces and all and I, I guess uh, hey look man it's 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 probably a sensible thing to do given the current situation but yeah, 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 very bizarre. Look, one thing I, I I'm curious about because you know here you are, you're you're an, an amazing artist, man, incredible skills, and you've been just dominating Thanks. on on several fronts. You know, I've been watching watching you over uh, well a good couple of years now, and um, so you were somebody that I saw very much as as you know having a good firm handle on the uh, on the gallery system, on being a, an artist who is represented on showing your work and selling work and commissions and all that sort of thing. And now, how do you find, what What do you think is your kind of idea or prediction now moving forward? That model has to change, no? It feels like it's changing, at least for now. I mean, because mm. I feel bad for the galleries because they have, they depend on the space and the interaction. I mean, we are working behind the scenes and we produce and then we give the work to the galleries and they're mm. the ones shaking the hands and, and making the calls and having the openings. So now mm. that this is happening, now suddenly everybody became at the same level. Now mm. you see people that are used to have a team of makeup artists like in the news or or like TV shows now at their houses. And now I feel that sometimes we are better equipped than them to do videos because we're being hustling um, with our, like by ourselves. And now I see like, like amateurs had better quality now has they have a better quality now than professionals on mm. TV. And now the even galleries, like imagine like these famous artists in these great galleries, what are they up to now? Like, and so I feel kind of bad for many of the changes, how they're affecting people. I mean, yeah. I used to, I walk for years, I, I walk around my neighborhood uh, with my wife or by myself to wander and think and, you know, give some walk. And, and I was alone pretty much walking my whole time. And suddenly now I go out and everybody's out, everybody's walking. And I'm wondering all these people, what were they, what were they doing at this time that now they cannot do? And, and that affects me um, a little bit. So yes, definitely times are changing. In terms of the galleries, I think it's important to always be independent. Never rely on outside sources because this situation, unless it's necessary. But an artist is someone, I think our goals should remain the same, which is communication. Our communication is, is always the essential thing. Like we are all little messengers that got, has, we have a background we are attracted to certain art of that came before us or is in the present. And then we kind of develop a system to communicate it again to the new generation and to bring it out. So we pretty much get from here and give here. And that has to keep being the same. We, I don't think we should be influenced by this moment and be so literal about it because, because we are rushing to this communication. It's better to kind of absorb and and see what's in, what's important because I'm sure what was important a year ago is still important, and and we shouldn't change that priority, um, you know. Hmm. No, I, I I see what you mean. Um, it is it is interesting. I'm now at a, at a point where I'm getting to know uh, people in the town a whole lot better because before you know you might just see them and be like, hey. but now it's like. <laughs> You pass them, they're sitting at their fence or whatever. You're like, oh, are you, you okay? Everything all right? You know, what's going on? Oh, we haven't met. I'm Andrew, whatever. <laughs> I've been here two years. <laughs> it's so interesting, though, isn't it? I mean, for, for, for I think for once, um, you know, since, since I can ever remember, uh, we have something that is really, truly, globally unifying, you know? Yes. And that, that's going to be very you know, interesting. No, in a way, you know, so, yeah, in a way, I think good things can come out like anything. Good things come out of anything if you're capable of, of taking it out, you know, and selecting it. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a lot of things that are bad about it, and, you know, a lot of people are going through it. But I think if we just go and realize that we're not the center of our universe and this is happening and we can just give some positive 
aspect of our life to people. That's why I believe that artists should keep working because through that is how we fix things in our minds and in other people because we're going to bring forward things that others might identify with even with even not on purpose right just because it's important to us it must be important to other people just like this situation is changing everybody imagine this is like a like a piece of art almost it's like an art performance art (laughs) you know like everybody go to their houses you know and then everybody's communicating in that sense like it's very strange so Mm. man (laughs) yeah yeah i I like the way you think about this it's performance art global performance art you know, I still, um, yeah, I, 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 I still, uh, yeah, I, I, maybe then it'd be great to, um, cause we just had April fools not long ago and I was hoping that the, the government would come out and just go, okay, everybody gotcha. All right, go back to work. You know, it, it just any minute. You know, but, I, I just, you know, go on. Yeah. That I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking that this is a time to know how to adapt to the new situation Mm -hmm. and and it's always good to isolate ourselves and be more clear with our expression you know developing the technique of course but also how to be um genuine and how to find ourselves because i believe that since art is an expression from like our inner most you know profound part um in a way we can be distracted also by outside noise and when things come like this, you go more, I mean, literally too, but you go psychologically inward. And I believe this is the time to learn to not care about the past. Like this is the perfect example because it's, people will be stuck to like older, maybe people that they like the way that, you know, like it's hard for them to see the new changes coming up. And we're all inside experienced and a little old so in a way we want to bring back some of those things but if we think we're just being born it looks like a few a new opportunity and that's the only way to have a good out out look on life like this because otherwise you just become your own victim mm-hmm. you know like you, the sure. system used it and if you want to be away from the system what better way than to say okay this is what it is I cannot change it. So since we cannot change it, how can we adapt and grow in it? And that's what I've been thinking about lately. Like, how is it that we can manage it? So the same questions with the galleries or, yeah. So, well, that, that, that's okay. So so I, I totally appreciate that point of view. So then you, in, in this case, you, Caesar, um, how, in, and again, neither one of us has a crystal ball. But again, I, I, when I was saying that before about you having, um, you know, from the outside looking in anyway, if you don't mind me saying, looking like you really dominated this this one part of the art world. And when I say dominate, it's not like it's all yours, but like you seem to be thriving within that niche. But then also at the same time, you've got a very strong online presence with a fantastic Instagram following, a great YouTube channel, and you're selling tutorials and stuff. So you seem to be embracing your independence with your online persona, but you've also got this thriving business that is following very much a traditional art gallery paradigm. So now again, in the, in the changing landscape, are you finding that you're wanting to shift more in one particular direction as a way to adapt to and, and grow in what's happening now? I think awareness is my response to that because I don't, I don't, I don't decide for that. Like yeah. my always, my, my core uh, engine is saying, communicate, connect. Okay. And, and, he, and, and that stays the same. So for instance, if the galleries are closed, okay, okay, it's fine. That's not anymore an option for me in that sense. Even though this week I sold a couple of pieces through the galleries, I don't know how he dealt, I, I don't know how he did it, but uh, he was he was able to find the connection and someone got interested. So I'm like, perfect, if you wanna sell. So I'm always kind of open to see what the options are. I'm not replanning because my plan could be worse than my attitude of staying open. So I don't want to I don't want to ruin an opportunity just because I was not looking at it, you know? So in, so what I Brilliant. do is like I so I stay aware of what's going on and I understand that yes, totally there are aspects of this time that makes you develop more or your individual kind of expression and not depend so much on outside sources mm-hmm. like 
you know, groups <laughs> and galleries for now. That should change. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, the whole structure is set up and the people that will be alive after this were alive before this. So I so I think it's the same people that are going to transfer into another way, maybe now or if things change in the future with traveling or I think this is going to be solved. I think we're in the middle of the crisis and in the middle of the crisis, I think the best way to to act or react is to stay calm. You know, like uh, it's like an emergency, like don't freak out, calm, be, be calm and also uh, like offer the most positive part, part of you, like love and and try to see what's important to you and all that, you know, like less distractions. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I, I, I love what you're saying there. I mean, again, whenever I talk to you, I, I, I feel like you highlight some things for myself anyway that go, yeah, I need to work on that. Because uh, I'm always, you know, and again, I'm always head in the past or really overly focused on the future. And so a situation like this, if you're very future focused, can, you know, elicit a fear of response in you because it's like, oh, the future is uncertain. You know, we, we could tell from the past there's a certain pattern. And it's like, oh, well, I'll just keep following that pattern. Everything will be okay. But now it, when the world gets turned upside down, I can see how being, you know, present minded and just being calm and not freaking out, that, that can actually be quite an, quite an ally. Because, yeah, again, we don't know where this is going to land. You know, when, when all the dust settles, we don't know what's what the world is going to be that we're presented with. Um, but it's it's that that's interesting. I think that'll be a big takeaway for me anyway from this conversation. It's just, hey, dude, chill out. <laughs> just relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be I, in the moment. I would say, know? yeah, I would say to also develop a better system because things since mm. things are changing outside, like with the supermarket, like you mentioned, or like the neighbors, or things outside are changing and forcing us to to change. I think this is the time to also rethink. Really on the system that we had developed in creating art or creating any type of work. And we can clear it up and make a new system that works better. Instead of being like blurry and trying to, to fit in or not fit in, like instead of doing this outside thing, we should again, learn from this, what's happening, because I think everything is for us to learn from. And this is teaching us to go inside and readjust, just like countries are readjusting and rethinking their medical situation and all that. I think that we can readjust our system. When you're work, waking up, how, what are you doing that helps your cause or your, or your life? And if anything is distracting or used to be distracting you, this is the time to change it, you know, because me, before maybe people had bad habits, like always, you know, and, and all these habits are influencing the bigger system, which is a system of life that gets you to live fully and express it and all that. So I think like details matter at this point. And even the time of, of choosing when to go to the supermarket for you, like you can select that and, and everybody can, you know, look at their lives and say, okay, this, I was smoking too much without thinking I was drinking drinking this or I was wasting time with this and now it's, it doesn't feel important. So all these little details, I think if we if we spend time to fix it up, it's like we're fixing the world in a way because we're fixing our internal world. You see, it's like that's a feeling I get. There's this, um, okay, I, I, I really hope this doesn't offend anybody. This is not my intention to <laughs> cause offense or anything, but there is this, um, there's a media slogan here, a talking point that was put out by the New Zealand government. And New Zealanders, by and large, are a really friendly bunch of people, like the very calm mannered, but very welcoming, very friendly bunch of people. Um, I think Australians like to think they are the friendliest, but I've found New Zealanders are just so nice. They're just beautiful people. And that's not a slight to Australians. I love Australia. I grew up there. But um, I, uh, it, it, very, very interesting people. So the government slogan is uh, be kind at the moment. It's just be kind. And I saw that on the news. I'm like, oh, pff, come on, be kind, be kind, come on. You know, and I was just, I was, I started, I started taking the piss a bit. But now I think that that is actually maybe something that we need and something that, again, because when you look at another person, you're starting to recognize, and it's almost like looking in the mirror, you're starting to recognize that there's a, a connection there you're both in this thing together and again whether you agree about that thing or not there is a thing 
you know, like, and when I say that, what I mean is like, I've got some ideas about what's going on that are, are very much against the grain of, of what the mainstream media is putting out there. Again, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Okay, whatever. I don't really talk about it much. I just talk no, about no, the fact that I, I am. I, but I, 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 I think it's totally logical. And I think everybody in their houses are having the same conversations. So yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what I, what I see here is I'm like, hmm, I, I, I look at this situation and I go, it, something's not really adding up to me. But but the thing but the fact remains is that we're all binded by you know if it's not this this disease crisis or pandemic as they're calling it it's certainly going to be an economic crisis uh, and and so we're going to start to see this connection there uh, more and more so. Um, Caesar, yeah. I, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was afraid this. Uh, you were about to offend. You, yeah, you were about to offend some people. Oh, yeah. okay. No, no, no. So that was that was it. No. Yeah, um, okay. But hey. Okay. Here we go. So you know, in in the face of it, I, I just I'll share something that I haven't really shared uh, publicly or, or openly before. Um, in terms of changing the way we we do things, right? One of the things we're doing here is we're starting to garden. We're growing our own food. And um, I actually reached out to neighbors and people in the community, and we've got a group of 15 people now. Now, of course, in isolation, we're separated, but we're talking and planning. We've got a group of 15 people now to work on a community garden project where we're going to be growing our own food, training each other how to do it, and then setting up little groups where we spread out into the community. And the goal is to get the entirety of this town as close to self-sufficient as possible. And so when we started thinking about that, we were like, man, you know, that would be a really cool constructive thing to come out of something like this. Because what, when, 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 the, when the grocery stores, like we, we had, as happened all over the world, there was a run on the grocery stores. Shelves went out of stock. And I was thinking to myself at that time, what if the supply chain breaks down? Then what are we going to do? Yeah. But what if it doesn't? And then you spend energy on that scarcity mindset of survival because it you know i also want you to question if if what you're responding to is actually the goal of the of the people on top of you to make people kind of afraid and unify because that's a little bit like communism in a little bit, in a way you know in a way if you go if you go to cuba every house has some chickens the other house is letters and then they trade between each other and that is how the government thrives because they keep people entertaining stuff like this instead of thinking of ideas that's ideas is what breaks the system and the communication in a broader sense because the smaller you go the more they can control you you know so in a way i'm thinking yes i have a backyard i could be thinking like this too and i have thought about it but the moment there's no food outside i think it's better to go out and start shooting <laughs> to the air um, <laughs> and protest because that is like a pressure cooker and you go outside. I'm like, I don't want to be the one eating and my neighbors don't have anything to eat if they don't have a garden. And I think we have to kind of fight the bigger system for them to keep, to keep us, us free because I'm sure there are going to be companies that want to, that are better at building a garden and are better at, at delivering it and then you're going to be better at doing your art and i think that's how the bigger structure works so i would i wouldn't agree with that but i would i like the idea i think that should be always present what i don't like is the sudden change you know mm, like if someone yeah. told me i've always done it and now i'm getting better at it yeah. or i always wanted to do it with my wife but the whole mm. idea of the thing scares me uh, and I wouldn't like it, you know. But, I I totally appreciate but I'll what go you're saying. Have a dinner. Yeah, no, I, look, I totally appreciate what you're saying, and I and I do take your point. When I was looking at that, and again, yeah, to, to be honest, I, I did buy into the fear, but I started thinking about it and going, okay, look, without knowing exactly what's going to happen in the future, this could go one or two ways, or it, it, like millions of ways. Who knows? Like the, the the possibilities are actually pretty open and endless here. But I was looking at it, going, huh. It, it caused me to think about, yes, how fragile the system is, but also there was a couple of other things that I, I was already missing in my life. Now, I'm sure you're a bit like this as well. Like, I'm obsessed with art and content creation. I'm all in. And I, and I think people that are looking from the outside yeah, can course. tell that I'm all in, you know, and, and a bit like you. you. You seem to be one of these guys that's all in. And I, I consequently, 
never had this sense of balance. Like people talked about this thing like called balance. And I, I started to imagine it. It was like this mythical creature, like a unicorn that was frolicking away in a mysterious forest somewhere. And I had to find that thing and it was impossible. I could never find the balance. But, but uh, since coming up with this garden idea, I thought, well, I didn't really socialize enough with people face to face. I didn't really feel like I was, I live here, but I'm not in the community. And I wanted that. And I also never really, mm-hmm. I used to love having my hands in the earth and just, and, and, and actually having a feeling like, yes, I'm creating art and I'm making something, but also just becoming more connected to a natural system. And I was living in Australia. That's and in, nice. in, Well, in, in, in the middle of summer in Australia, I went to the doctor. I was feeling a little bit low. They took my blood and everything. And he was saying, you have a vitamin D deficiency. How is that possible? You live in Perth, it's summer, and you're vitamin D deficient. Go out. <laughs> and I was just like, man, okay, okay. I, 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 something needs to happen here. So I, I'm thinking I could actually, there could also be all sorts of enormous positive spinoffs. So I think if I can cheerfully, joyfully go about that, maybe there will be some... Uh... Yeah, that I see, um, yeah, we can see a lot of new... Um, talent out there being creative and sharing and lifting all the people's spirit in these times that we didn't see before. Now more united in that way because we have kind of the same problem, even though like details are different. So, so in a way, yes, it's a time to do that. It's just uh, very tricky for me. I believe the balance in a way comes from, from realizing that we are half instinct and half consciousness. And we have to realize that our animal part knows no problem. It's always reacting to nature, and nature is the one that guides it by the second, you know, by the mid, by the day. And 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 I think part of our civilization, which comes from that conscious, like from awareness mm-hmm. of of what we know, that's when problems arise. So I think if we bal- if we find that balance that's when we become more full, more complete, because mm-hmm. we, we realize what part is triggering this animal aspect of us and which part it comes from the, from the knowledge that we have um, developed that is creating the internal problems. Because animals have no problems even in this coronavirus or with whatever virus, you know, and they adapt <clears throat> to whatever happens. So in a way, that's a beautiful thing that we are experiencing too. I saw um, just out the front of my house, um, we, we, have, we have this veranda on the front of our house that is rotting. I mean, we bought an old house from 1875. And so wow. there, there's this veranda out the front and we haven't replaced it yet. And every time we think we're going to do something with it, we always think, oh, no, the sparrows and the swallows that are nesting in there, oh, they'll be evicted kind of thing. So yesterday <laughs> I'm out the front and I'm looking at this, this, the power lines and they're just full of swallows and it's just beautiful. And I was thinking, they're not social distancing, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, <laughs> they're carrying on life is normal, man, you know, and, and, and there, there are birds flying and chirping and there's insects and bees buzzing. The flowers are blooming and it's been a great few days here down in the South Island, but it's amazing. Like when you're, when you're out there looking in nature, it just, it just keeps going on. It's just, and it's just. Yeah. And it, 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 but here we are in our head, just going, you know, it just it doesn't stop, man. I'm yeah. I'm fascinated. Like I think it's it's very interesting right now. Like when you when you're online and you're just browsing YouTube and you're just looking at what other creators are producing and what people are responding to. I'm also curious at what kind of physical art is going to come out of this time. Man, I hope. I hope we don't fall into doing art for this physical time, for this special time, mm-hmm. um, because it will be like a trend. It will be like a fashion. I, I hope it just becomes timeless. You know, I, I hope we become more timeless by this situation. Um, and and by by that, you know, I am to you know to have more clear expression but i mean i've seen this you know people painting masks and being like very very literal about this change and of course there's always like illustrations and like visual thing but if we understand that art is a communication at another level than language and then something that we can just describe with words 
I believe that then this is the time to develop that and to say what is important from from my experience in life and and not just from this crisis you know like from life and then bring it out and then that's the only way to get rid of the crisis i believe because when you do that you just erase it there's nothing it's not influencing you so that's why i don't want to keep it it's like we never forget type of idea it's like why not like of course move forward life is new you know um very strange yeah, I, I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, you know, in scrolling through Instagram, I, I used to be, and, and the kind of the joke was that you would see uh, through your Instagram search function, uh, wh- how many posts could you count before you found another portrait of the Joker? And and it, it's just, oh, there's another one. There's another one. Like all that fan art. But now it's people wearing masks. So I, I totally take your point. What I'm, what I'm excited about, and I'm seeing this also, you know, in, in myself as well as other artists that I've been talking to, talking to is that, you know, this, this kind of gravitational pull towards some more authentic expression. It's like, you know what? I've been thinking so long about this idea or i've been thinking so long i'm one day i'm gonna do that now i'm really gonna do it and so this is the time yes. yeah yeah this is the time so whether it's a, a product of that forced isolation or maybe just something a little bit uncertain outside that's putting that pressure on that's causing them to go no now i'm gonna do that painting i always wanted to do uh, so i I'm, I'm excited to see that i think yes, that this is that gonna is, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's gonna yeah, wake but- a lot of people up in that way Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. now that you mentioned with the gallery system not being part of the goal as much during wow, even man. a month, you know, because before without knowing, since we are part of, of society, we tend to get lo- lost and, and, and produce things because they worked in the past for us. So we have a tendency to do to say, oh, these type of paintings work. Let me do more of that. Or my clients are buying this. Let me do more of that. And we get lost in a little bit of that translation. And I believe now it's like, bro, like if you believe the whole world is going to end which is not but like if you if people's mentality is that then it's the time to do what you always wanted to do and actually that is the best type of art because galleries don't know what the best art is they just present whatever and sometimes they give you opinions based on their limited knowledge of how things are going in that time limited time so i believe we it's time for artists to teach the world in how how unique uh, things were inside the whole time and now can come out and and I and I think uh, also like for me it's like that before I was like thinking bigger like production and all this stuff and now I'm like man let me go back intimate and enjoy what I love because who's gonna judge it nobody cares you know and I'll be the only one so let me do it for me and I realize that the moment we do art exclusively to have fun with it from for, with ourselves that's when it actually touches more people because art is not supposed to be a commission even even not even undirected um sometimes it feels like we're doing commission work somehow like and and um and this is i mean some artists are not like some the great artists always found that inner voice that regardless of the outside they would say this is coming on like andrew wyeth or people like that that are so you know like pure and for me it's always been a struggle because i'm very like outward and extroverted and i've i was always contaminated with this product product and result and now i'm like oh man let me try to get that van gogh out of me you know so so what's this what's this going to look like now what what are some of the new works that you're working on what are some of these new areas that you're exploring tell me about how you found your authentic you know voice again caesar well for me i realized that it's a whole combo i realized Mm. that that art is a is a communication at many levels and and it's not language and also i realized that the 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 frame our canvas is in a way people's phone or people's people's screens and and yes you can go to the gallery and and feel the real tactile 
uh, aspect of each painting individually, but as a whole, we are a whole. Like if I look at you, you are the art piece. Like your headphones, your Skype, your your traveling, your garden, <laughs> all that is is part of your art. Like you're expressing yourself through voice, through through actions like this. And I believe that's a new type of art. It's not just the part of the painting aspect of it. And and that's bringing me to realize how much much I used to criticize or be afraid. Not, um, I had like an internal voice that I don't know where I got it from, but it used to tell me, and I think we mentioned it in our last conversation, that used to tell me, if you teach, you will lose that professional artist feeling to it. And, and I'm like, man, that's, that was so wrong about that. Because now, like finally, I can do what I love and not caring about it. So if I discover something and I share it, it's like incredible. And I was missing out on that. And I guess it's fine because I was developing something else. It's not that I was going fishing, you know, but, but I am now working in my sketchbook, more intimate. I'm doing like these portraits that I love rendering the nose. And before I used to be judgmental about it and say, man, this is silly. I need to make a big production. And I realized that my whole life is the production, you know? <laughs> yeah. I look, I can relate as well. Like that, that feeling came up and I even had people come out and tell me, uh, if you teach, uh, if you become a YouTuber, you're, you're not a serious artist. And, um, <laughs> I, I kind of felt, uh, at the time, like it was just like, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Cause it was something that I just felt compelled to do. But what I found in recent years is that I'm painting and drawing exactly what I want to do. And, and it's so it's now no longer what can I paint because somebody has requested it or commissioned it, which I still do, you know, commissions and stuff. But but for the most part, it's like now what do I really want to share and what's something I really. So if there's going to be a lesson on skin tones or portraiture or something or a landscape, it's like, what's a really cool landscape. And so it's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to I'm going to do that thing, you know. So, yeah, uh, yeah totally. it, it, it's, it's been a very interesting uh, time in, in terms of, you know, well, finding the digital medium in terms of freedom artistically. But, yeah, I, I, again, I just think the the authenticity, I, I'm feeling a new resurgence with myself, like a, a, new, a new wave of this feeling coming through, like you've got to jump into that theme or that subject. For me, it's actually, you know, it might surprise some people, but um, for me, I'm looking forward to getting into biblical subjects i you know looking through some like old testament stuff and and just kind of like looking at it going there's some really grand scenes and and images and philosophy and ideas there that that could be communicated with a painting and and that was the vast majority of art you know especially you know art history you know going all the way through the renaissance it was all religious stuff but there's some there's some things there, even mythological subjects as well. And so I, I'm looking forward to exploring more of that territory. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, I like that. I like that. And I think if you also involve it, in, in, incorporate it in your life so that it's visible, because mm -hmm. I like remember, we are making people imagine things mm -hmm. and we are making people like have these fantasies. And and if we if we feel them ourselves in our lives and then when, when it comes out it gives that um fantasy to people and through our youtube sh uh, channel i mean uh, videos that that's what happens like people are spending some time there and then they go home or they they go to work with like more stuff to think about and i think that's the same aspect as cave paintings when they say listen you guys haven't been hunting but this is what we feel out there and then everybody inside think of things and and the weapons and all this stuff and i think it's just like your world transmit it in an in a very honest way so that people can dream into it and then we can create a new reality and that keeps multiplying and then we we filter what is not important mm. and we remain and retain what is important so i'm glad that you're thinking of that because i think there is a tendency for our generation to go back and, and feel that we are cavemen. Like you have a cave, I have a cave, I have some paintings in my cave, you have like plants in your cave. Like <laughs> it's the same shit. Like, and this is a fire pit right now, you know, like yeah, a yeah, digital. Yeah. So in a way I we like haven't it. changed. 
Yeah, we haven't changed. It's the same stuff. So we have to just be raw like that sometimes to be yeah. able to, to communicate better, you know? I must say, you know, for people watching the video version of this podcast, um, you know, they're going to see some awesome paintings behind you. Now, are, are these <laughs> mostly your your works? Are these because you collect a lot of antique paintings as well, don't you? Are they, this yeah, these is, are older. This older older collection. Wow, man. So can you can you tell me I'm intrigued by the, the gentleman who's just over your your left shoulder. Uh, who, yeah. who is this guy? What, what's what's the story there? That's Beethoven playing right. uh, the Moonlight uh, right oh. there. So that, oh, pa- wow. that piece is uh, was in. Um, well, I don't want to. No, never mind. Uh, well, it's just by a Cuban painter, Menocal, mm-hmm. uh, 1921. This painting was uh, created. So it's pretty pretty cool piece i like it and uh, yeah no i for me each painting i collect is a university mm-hmm. i go and i look at it and i see the brush strokes and when i learn something about art i go back and see if i can see it in my paintings and i can see it in person and that's why i collect it it's kind of like to to keep learning and keep proving that when things work they are present in in good pieces mm-hmm. and and it's just that relationship and dialogue back and forth mm. And I'm particularly enjoying over your right shoulder that little uh, seascape scene. That's um, mm-hmm. that's quite beautiful, man. A beautiful work. Thanks, yeah. Man. yeah, yeah, yeah. You you have an eye. I haven't managed to collect any old paintings. I just I, I make I make some good fakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have it inside of you, so it's fine. You know. <laughs> You know the, the the other thing that I'm finding now, you know, with my studio time is I'm I'm kind of checking into audio books and podcasts myself, and just trying to re-engage my brain. It's a great way to take my mind off stuff. But what are some of the things that you're listening to at the moment? Some of the things that you're learning about? Something that's maybe captured your imagination? Well, I just finished uh, this book called "What Is Art" by uh, Leo Tolstoy, and I need to read it again because it's so like heavy you know it's very deep and philosophical but it has made me see things differently so i'd really recommend that book to anybody who wants to you know learn his opinion pretty it's funny because it's like a hundred years old this book and more actually it was uh yeah so at the end of the 19th century and he uh, has to say stuff that is present. And that's what makes me think that there's no time in a sense. And what goes through those people goes through, you know, our our own time. And he talks about how we have lost a little bit the authenticity of art because we, without knowing, became, um, we, we, we got sold out this idea of beauty and representing things that are exotic, like the women and the beautiful and the jewelry and the flashy stuff. So whatever we're we're see in rap videos or like on 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 people that want to sell a book and then they get it like in a they get in a plane in a private plane, all that he says that that's influencing artists to create art that has that exotic part of it and how that can ruin it because the best part of art is that raw kind of singing in the shower feeling it's like it doesn't he doesn't believe it has to be perfectly developed technically he believes that it's better if you enjoy it yourself for the weirdness of it and you don't consider at all what people would like about it or not and that way we stay away from this um uh, provo- provoking uh imagery of sex and you know things that we that are so easy to like very very strange um you know to read that book and reanalyze everything <laughs> how, how interesting though for this time as well though right mm-hmm. because it's almost yeah. like if you if you were to turn on you know i don't know what the music show is in, in the united states I, I haven't watched this crap for years and years but whenever i do catch a rap video of of the guns and the blings and the drugs and the cars and the fat whips and all that stuff. Oh, man, I'm really showing my edge here. But uh, but if whenever you see that and it's all glitz and glamour and flashy and stuff, you, now I think especially now it would just seem so vacuous and like just so empty. There's nothing there. But again, how, what an interesting book to be reading in terms of getting back to that authenticity thing again you know, and, and truth. And for me, again, you know, with the garden thing, that was something that was uh, really an exploration in truth and, and simplicity. Like I was trying to work out a way to simplify my life, not by adding another project to it, but by bringing something in that was wholesome, that was like, 
unifying and going back to those core key values and principles that I think make a good life. And I think now for me, it used to be like early in my career, when especially when I was experiencing a lot of commercial success, happiness was then something you, you felt when you had reached the top and you just kept hitting these highs and highs and highs. And what I found over those years is that you just keep running after it and after it and after it and to eventually find that there's nothing there. And similar with the, with the work as well. I always kept chasing these bigger and bigger and bigger projects and been like, oh, you seen that? Well, how about this? And then how about this? And now how about this? You know, and it's just- By the way, those landscapes are impressive. Oh, so thanks, I'm, man. Glad, I'm glad you were going that way. You know, like, <laughs> I think we needed to watch that. You know? but, but, but now it's like, I, I'm now looking, it's, it's interesting because, you know, artistically speaking, I'm now looking at simple little tiny subjects like I, right now i want to paint a chicken nice i'm gonna go from this grand mountain scene to just how the light shines off a feather and it's iridescent and beautiful and that sort of thing yes and and so i i think in a way you know a shift in focus is really interesting so like you're saying with tolstoy there that um it, that's a shift in focus of sorts away from something where he saw maybe society getting out of hand and, and the way we, and, and what was happening in art getting out of hand, redirecting it back to something that was more honorable or truthful or something. And I think, I, I don't know, man, I, again, I just, I'm so excited in a certain way and not to be, you know, insensitive to what people are going through now, but artistically, I, I it's just, I, I think it's interesting. I yeah, and I think the book is, is now more remarkable even because mm. he talks about the idea of going society, of thinking, mm. of not doing stuff just because you individually think that you have to do it, even if it if it doesn't work in society. Like he thinks that art should be a communication with yourself, with the best part of yourself, and then that in turn helps the other. Like it should be with a good intent kind of thing. Like, and and it's, you know, I mean, and realist artists in general are have that kind of route because we take the skills from the past. So in a way we are humble to do that, which by the way, have you noticed like the other day I was talking to Valentina, to my wife, and I said, um, and I realized that everybody, every career is based on previous masters, like medicine, everybody, everything that they're doing now is on other people's work. And, and that has always been the case. But for some reason, when artists say that they're inspired by the past, we get judged I'm like, no, no, it has to be like brand new, like nothing. And I'm like, who else does that? Like musicians use the same notes and the same principles that being out there for, and nobody credits the past. It's like if, as if they invented it, when in fact, nothing, plumbing, planting a tree, everything we get from all the people that did it in the best possible manner for everybody else to enjoy. And in a way, we forgot about that and we became so self-centered and we said, you know, this is, I mean, in terms of like modern and contemporary art, um, we went the, that route of, of self, you know, like indulgent and, and not caring about stuff. And in a way, we're breaking from that and taking root in in you know what was important in the past and i think that is important now because now everybody's connected and together and when i do something i'm like man it's like you're saying like this is my last chance what is it that i can bring out and uh, i think it's gonna bring the best out of people i think we have to always look at things in a positive way like you said at the at the beginning you know 100 percent, man 100 percent. we yeah I, I well it makes no sense to look at it any other way we we've got to keep our, our positivity and our optimism um because it, it might not turn out to be what we're fearing and you know the, the, the worst possible scenario um interesting though what you're saying about um you know, other, other industries. I mean, art seems to be doing it um, or in other things within our culture um, in terms of the, the, the past having influence on what we're doing now. Yeah, art very much has been doing its own thing for many, you know, many, many years now. Uh, and I think maybe this is another chance for, for art to kind of get out of the hands of an establishment. I, I, I've always said, seen art as having, there have been multiple art worlds that maybe aren't really overlapping and people 
when I get messages from people and students and things, you know, going, how do I make it in the art world? And I'm like, well, first recognize that there's more than one art world. Do you mean like this academic art world, this, this modern contemporary art world? Cause I don't even, I don't even go there. I don't even talk about that. Like I, to me, I've never fit into that. I don't understand it. Um, I, I, I don't feel there's anything there for me. It's certainly nothing authentic anyway, that it's very much trying to just find the next biggest thing, the next new thing, the next new thing. And my, my feeling was always, whenever you're trying to find the next new thing or the next original thing, you're too much caught up in your head anyway, that you're no longer authentically expressing yourself. You're searching for what's original, not what's authentic. So now it becomes a game is how can I be weirder than you? Yeah, you thought of making a big green cactus and putting it in the city and we're going to pay $1.2 million for that? Cool. Well, I'm going to do a big pink beach ball and it's going to be balanced on the nose of a clown. I, I don't know. I'm just making it up. But like, you know, and I'm, then, then I'm going to pour it with ketchup, uh, pack ketchup all over it. For some reason, my modern art analogies always involve ketchup. I don't know if there's something there, but you get what I'm trying to say. Blood. Blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fake blood. Uh, fake blood. Just ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> well, I mean, and for I understand what you're saying in terms of different genres, yeah. and we all have a room, room to express. And for some reason, we have believed that if you don't fit into that mm. mentality of the mainstream and the contemporary, you know, elite uh, museums, what they represent, for some reason, we are inferior or less or something. Yeah. And I definitely believe that, yeah, we all have room to express whatever, like watercolor, you know, people that do like video tutorials for, or makeup, like mm. all, all, there are many types of art um, fields and like mm -hmm. little worlds that you can find yourself mm. into and feel perfectly fine. Mm. And, but I think, I think in the same manner, people that have been trained, um, like I was in a contemporary setting and they're painting with those definitions of art in mind. I think that's fine too, because in a way they're bringing out sometimes things that are wrong with our times or things that can improve or funny stuff about it in a more direct way and a raw way that make people who are willing to look at it, think about it mm. and respond, even though visually it's not pleasant or even though sometimes you know i mean that's like a genre of itself in itself mm -hmm. and they have the power or so it looks <laughs> like um to other people that are smaller you know like we are like we are not in this big collections around the world or like sotheby's uh, things you know like whatever but but um times like this make everybody go whoa 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. what was what <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so that's good isn't there something to be said, though, for the for the doing, for the process, for the actual being engaged in the the act of making the art? I, I, I think that that's something that is often overlooked, that maybe if we if we. But how put... do you know? But how do you know if those individuals are not engaged and the way they do it is just different than how they did it in the past? Oh, no, so I'm not I'm not making the comment in terms of, of the modern artists. I'm sort of moving on from there. But no, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I you yeah. maybe maybe Caesar, maybe I need to loosen my definitions a little bit. I, I'm still bitter <laughs> about my art school experience. And I'm still bitter about the way the government spends money, because what I see is, you know, or spent money on public art projects. What I see is I see basically uh, you, you have an art establishment and the acad academic art world. So these people that find themselves in government positions on an arts council or people that select the works, they're selecting based on their feeling about what they think and their agenda, what they think should be shown and what is valid to them. And when a government is hiring somebody for that position of an art, art buyer or an arts council or something like that, they're hiring from, well, who has the qualification? And the people with the qualifications are the people who went through that university system. So you are selected from that system that has indoctrinated you, know, you to a certain extent. You go through that, and then finally now you're producing something. The whole time you were going through that system, though, you were in a bubble that was very much separate from the outside world. And what's happened through that paradigm, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I, I, maybe I shouldn't judge, 
But you now have something where the effect is, unfortunately, a lot of people, the vast majority of the public, don't understand what their government just spent money on. And they're looking at it going, well, and now you hear people saying, hey, listen, I, I, I know nothing about art. That's a crime. I, I think I think that that should be something that n people no longer have as part of their 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 language is something that they say. It's like it, we, we should be producing things and the society should be producing things that can be easily understood by people or ac accessed by people. Look, if you want to make people think fine, if you want to impart some sort of message, no problem. But I think um, what's happened is we've created something where there is now a divide between art that's being produced by an establishment and the public i think before but do you think is but do you on. think the establishment i'm wondering if if there was mm. ever or if i don't think there's never i think the establishment will always be picking and choosing mm -hmm. and and selecting what art mm -hmm. runs the show mm -hmm. and you know what i'm saying like it just happens that we are a little bit of the of we are against that because our in, intuition bring us to do something else and we don't we, we don't we don't want to be part of that even though we got sold at the beginning to study art and mm -hmm. they try it on us mm -hmm. but i think there is always going to be some people losing or some people winning regardless of your your luck in life like if you are more of this if you buy into that system and you like it i think you're just lucky if they get you now if if you're one of those contemporary artists and you never got selected that's bad because now you cannot even express yourself how you want to because the school never taught you that part they just taught you how to deal with the system you know but it's always there's always going to be winners and losers because there's always going to be the bigger people selecting based on their taste or what they think you for know for sure for sure no no i i appreciate that what what i what i think happens though is it, it it's weird. I, I think when we're talking about modern art, let's say let's say something like reductive art or minimalist art or installation art. For me, and again, I got my fine arts degree. I mean, I, I, I have a qualification in this stuff. So, so I, you know, I've got the piece of paper there. And, and, and I, for me, from my position, I look at it and I, I can't see a, a, a metric or a way that we can identify what is good and what is bad, what is effective, what is not. So when we get a, a an unmade bed made by Tracy Emin, which is, you know, over a decade old now, I think. Um, but but again, I keep thinking like that. And, and this is somebody that ends up becoming the head of drawing at the Royal Academy. I'm kind of gone. Okay, now here. Okay, look, I got a conspiracy theory for you. I saw a fantastic video on this on YouTube several <laughs> years ago. And what I might do is, if I can find her and I can reach out to her, I would try and get her on the podcast. But there was an interesting talk about how modern art was an invention by the CIA to destabilize culture. I loved it. I loved it because I'm like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> You're <laughs> like, even if it wasn't. <laughs> It acted like if it was. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, even if it wasn't, it had that effect. Um, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's, a si maybe it's a silly idea, but I, I like that idea. <laughs> what about music, though? Because music yeah. is doing this. Like, everybody, I think, ha is attached to some type of art. And mm. I don't think, I think people that might not be attached to, uh, you know, like visual art, which I think they are, because I think visual arts became the screen. Mm -hmm. yeah, not 100%. like. You know, like people are looking at TVs and movies and all that. And that, I think in a way they are connected with visual arts in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, we are a little bit more exclusive and, and it requires a different type of attention. Even our art will never be popular. Like you cannot get everybody to like portraiture like I do, you know. But I think people... If, uh, if people will find their connection and i think as long as we have the freedom to express it and the mean the, like we have social media and and uh, so far nobody's banning realism and i think that is a beautiful thing and i think that's how we connect and also you know the, like people have their favorite movies their favorite music their favorite operas and all this stuff is uh i think is feeding into our culture and constantly you know moving um so i mean yeah it's very strange 
I, I don't know, it, music, music's an interesting one, though, because I feel like, yeah, a lot of people find, you know, the, the expressions that they appreciate within music. But I think by and large, generally speaking, music in the mainstream is getting worse. And maybe this is a sign that I'm getting older, but I think what's happened is <laughs> they've they've shifted. And this is it's actually something very interesting to look into. Music used to be recorded and played at 432 hertz. It's now at 440 because through the process of playing stuff on the internet, don't, don't quote me on this, do your research, folks. But through the process of being played on the, on the radio, they needed everything to sound the same and they also needed to correct for loudness. So everything kind of peaked at 440 hertz and now everybody started recording at that because it was just more friendly system for radio. But 432 sounds so much better. It's so much more harmonic and, and deep and it's actually more soothing for us to listen to. And there's just depth there. There's a better resonance mm. there. But at 440 hertz, something was lost in translation. But now what you could do is I, maybe it was, again, I'm, I'm no physicist, but maybe it had something to do with the compression of the waves and the way that carried through a radio signal. Um, the result was, though, and the result of a lot of modern music is it's, it's really quite loud. And it's also really repetitive. So, like, you, you listen to a pop song now, for instance. It's, it's all, a formula. It, it, it's a formula, and it's all hooks. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have a few bars of that. We'll do chorus, and then we're going to have the hook, and then we're going to do this, and then, then, then we'll bring the hook again, and we'll do the hook another 14 times. And then you find people, like, I don't know. I've heard of this phenomenon before, but when people hear a song for the first time, it's like, oh, but through the process of hearing it all damn day, everywhere you go, it's like, oh, it's Beyonce. I love this song. All right. Yeah, yeah. Girls, who rules the world? All right. Yeah, here we go. And I'm like, man, this is pure drivel. It's absolutely pure drivel. Like, what's what's going on? And so I found um, – and, yeah. and I, I, it reminded me, though, of that little – that dynamic between my father and I where he would come into my room and I'd be like doing my homework and I'd have some music playing and he'd be like, what is that crap you're listening to? I'm like, you know, for most of the time it was, it was dad. That's Paul Simon. That's your generation. I blame you. Or, dad, that's Led Zeppelin. You grew up, you know, in the same era as these guys. It was like, oh yeah. Okay. That's okay. Funny. But, um, but I, I, I now listening to modern music, I find myself going, oh, I've become my father. <laughs> but yeah, but I, 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 I listen to yeah. the same thing as I used to listen when I was like a little kid. So I'm not into music, but I'm, now that you're telling me all that, I didn't know any of that. That's, I, that's actually something to think about sure yeah That's but, but I, I think i think what's happened though as well is that the way our society is operated the way we consume media changes the media itself i mean even movies now i'm not sure if what your experience is with movies but now i just can't watch them they've completely ruined star wars they've completely ruined all of these franchises that i grew up with it's like hey here's the dark crystal you know, the, the, that was the best Jim Henson movie of all time. Man, that was a great movie. And now they're going to make a Netflix series. I refuse to even watch it. it I, and I looked at the trailer. I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. Because yeah. again, it's, it's yeah. like what they do with the music. It's just, it's all hooks. It's all chorus. It's all that one line, you know? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't watch movies. Yeah. I mean, I've watched a couple of movies in my life. And uh, so, you know, I don't know anything about movies because I understand that that's an artistic a visual art expression. And I don't, I don't want to go there. Like, I know that they're doing it for like a formula too, mm -hmm. and for people to spend time watching it and like be entertained for an hour or two hours and not do much else. And I just don't buy into that. Just like, but you know, what's interesting that the same, the people that do art not caring about the audience in a way that knowing knowing that you're like probably damaging or don't care i think the audience responds the same way back to them because i think maybe those movies are getting less views or maybe not i don't know but like at least like let's say the moma or like contemporary museums have less people going to them because they don't care about the people and i think art that had people in mind attract people you know like the metropolitan which has like older art it looks like more contemporary because more people are going to the metropolitan that or used to <laughs> or hopefully we'll be back <laughs> but but you see like people go there more because the creators 
were in touch with humanity yeah. and, and care about humanity. So in a way, yes, the, it was like an inter, interaction. It's like a back and forth. I care about this. I'm deeply in touch. And then people feel it back. If you do it like, I'm going to do art and I don't care for anybody and I'm going to put ketchup, then I think people are saying, you know, you just need two people to buy it very expensive and a nice article, but you're actually isolated. What was the point of that expression if it didn't really touch or moved or improved our, our society? So I do believe that that type of art pays its price. There's no way to impose it. And like you said, like you're looking at the title and you're like, I'm not looking at this. Uh, because you know that it didn't consider you when they were doing it. They were doing it with an agenda of their own. And mm-hmm. I think that you, nobody can hide that. And at the end, it will it will be revealed. Yeah. Or, or I got a new one. Okay, how about instead of ketchup, ketchup being poured, how about taping a banana to a wall? How about, how about that one? That's another uh, very d- different, <laughs> so unique. <laughs> Apparently, that yeah. artwork was delicious. Apparently, it was yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about, dude. That's that's uh, exactly what I'm talking oh no, about. Oh no, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so deep, so so deep. But you know, it's um. Uh, that's interesting. So you're you're there. Um, you're you're not watching movies. I, I'm guessing the same is probably true for television. So what is what is Caesar Santos do to kick back and relax if you're not going to be painting? What what are you doing? Um, well, recently I've been spending time preparing my van, but in the moment that we had it ready, like my wife and I had this idea of just traveling the states and moving into this van. Uh, RV van, like with shower, you know, stove, fridge, everything pretty much. It's like a whole apartment on wheels and and everything stopped and we're just waiting. But that was taking some time uh, apart from my art. So I was kind of relaxing through that. Um, also, like playing some music at my own bad level. That's entertaining for me. Like I rather spend an hour trying a new song in a guitar or, than, uh, than watching a movie, you know, honestly, or... Or listening to podcasts, like maybe I just sit down, close my eyes, and put Carl Jung and and dream into it, and put rewind a lot of times because uh, you know it's like it's so difficult to understand sometimes, especially for me. Like I'm not like an intellectual, you know, like trained or anything like that. But 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 you get it like after repetition, like after my fifth time of the book, now I got it a little bit, <laughs> and I mean at my own kind of level, of course. But but I do stuff that fulfills that fills my whole, you know, structure. And teaching like with the new website that came on time, I'm like lucky because I was developing this with a friend for a year to be able to teach at an affordable price and share like short videos about technique and stuff. And and actually, Cesar Santos. Dot com check it out but um <laughs> thanks but no you are like the best i need to pay you for this because your audience is like uh the best um attention like they're they're like artists no like they, yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. so that, good folks perfect. good folks listen to this show absolutely uh, yeah. no no yeah so it was like thank you for that platform but anyways um so doing that takes time mm-hmm. and i'm there thinking how do i teach it what do i do and then my wife is editing and i look at her working on the computer and i'm so behind on all that so i don't know I, there's always time to do other things i think um mm-hmm. yeah if you really think about it Time is always full with things to do that doesn't have to be like, you know, what other people spend time with. Absolutely. I mean, it's okay. so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's so easy to just switch off and, and not engage in something constructive. And uh, I, I found I've made more of it. I, I mean, I was never a big TV watcher or movie watcher, but like sometimes in the evening, there, like I'd be so mentally spent that there'd be very little time for anything else. But now it's it's become in in recent months it's become more and more focused and directed and and getting away from that because even if it's like now if I was going to sit down and watch something what would I watch like what would I even watch where I'd just be like I'd turn it on try this couple of turn it on start watching be like ugh get it off yeah no man get it I off. mean I look some I look at a lot of like on YouTube like political. Yeah, things yeah, yeah. happening that's that are thing. happening yeah. Yeah. 
because that's actually a reality show, <laughs> you know, in a way that's mm-hmm. like real. And those are people that are excellent at what they do. Even if it's not convenient, they still, yeah. it's still <clears> like <throat> quality stuff. Yeah. Even if, it, you know, it's not like someone's, you know, kind of putting this together. It's like you're looking at some real life masters. And, and that's what I look at. And also even like the vocabulary, it's interesting to see, to hear what they say and how they put sentences together and what they're trying to, uh, you know, like bring to the public and how they're, you know. So all that makes me like entertains me mm-hmm. more than movies for sure, too. So what are, what are some of your favorite YouTubers out there that you're listening to? Um, Besides my channel. I don't- yeah, no, yeah, of course. <laughs> Besides art, I don't know. I don't know. I think YouTube is the same thing as as movies. You know, like I try to not be in it for okay. long. You know, sure. um, of, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I look at fights, like boxing fights, mm. or things that I can, you know, like musical instrument, like uh, tutorials, you know, stuff like this. Yeah. But I don't have like a yeah, just random. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm tending to browse by subject now. It's like, what am I interested in at the moment? A lot of it's really gardening stuff. So I'm, I'm on a massive Charles Dowding binge at the moment, this really cool English dude. Uh, who's got this no dig garden system? I'm just trying to. I'm just eating it up. Just everything he's producing. It's awesome. So it, uh, that's I, interesting, I, man. Yeah, that's I, hard. That's not, like that's not easy. That's a whole like you know. It's study. It's study. But it's, <laughs> look, I mean, and we're, nature, we're, yeah. nature behaves in weird ways. You know. Well, yes, it does. Uh, but but also, I think it's only weird if you come at it from that point of view of of we. Like from so for me because I don't understand it, it seems so chaotic and random. But for somebody like this guy who's been studying it for years, I mean, sure, he still he still can be surprised, absolutely. But but I, I'm looking at him and he just knows times of year, what vegetable, yes. depth of soil, soil composition, microbes, worms what compost mixture to use. Okay, plant your potatoes here. The sun's coming from there. Here's the shade. That's not going to be good for this crop. We're going to put in that crop. And it's just like so many moving parts. But to him, it's just it's just gone click. And you could tell that someone like that is in the is is really in tune with the system. Um, no, yeah, that's what that's what I meant to say that it will mm. take a lot of your energy because oh, it's yeah. a whole mastery by itself. Yeah. Like imagine him w- getting into painting, you know, like, oh, my God, what mediums do I use? How do I set up? Like yeah. this whole thing is uh, it's very complicated. Yeah. I mean, but any subject, I mean, you, you choose to dive into it. And you're going to open up a whole nother world. And this is a fascinating thing. I mean, this is the space that both you and I occupy now with with our online presence and teaching online as well. And, and the thing I find about teaching, which is really interesting from an education point of view, like it's opened up my own education uh, mm-hmm. with just painting because I start to realize like there's so much to know when it comes to just painting alone. So I can imagine any other subject is going to be like that. But uh, what a wonderful time, though, to be able to have access to a resource like YouTube, especially during this time where it's like, OK, <laughs> yes. I've got time on my hands. I've got an internet connection. I'm going to drill down and really look into this thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very interesting. In a way, it's like a church, you know, because before, like mm-hmm. the church is the place where the art hangs. Mm-hmm. And that's what YouTube is. It's a platform for you to express yourself and put your little corner, uh, your little creation in a corner there for people to, to see while they're connected to the whole world. So it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, for me, I, it's, it's been interesting because I can't go to church at the moment. So I've been like keeping in touch with that side of things uh, by listening to, you know, pastors and sermons and all sorts of stuff. I don't know if you're religious, I, yeah, but I, I, um, I, it's been a new thing for me. I never, I was never religious in the traditional sense because in Cuba, they almost force everybody at the beginning when they're kids to not believe in God. And, wow. and believe in the government like they are like if you think about it Che Guevara is a saint Fidel wow. Castro is the god and the state is the church like the, yeah they have the they have structured the whole system as if it was a religious um, uh, you know entity like that and then take people away from the bigger connection just to be able to be submissive to mm-hmm. them you know on in power and uh, and so that came up like I was even in in the states uh, thinking you know that's scientifically speaking 
uh, didn't make any sense, you know, the idea of God in the sky. And I was like confused because I never studied it. But then I keep hearing, I keep thinking, and I, and I read Carl Jung, Man in Search of a Soul, and also even Jordan Peterson with his biblical series. Mm -hmm. And I understood how we are, regardless of our beliefs, like we are just an entity that is physical and and uh, spiritual or like the mind and the body type of idea and we are a whole combo and we can ignore it so you cannot measure things that are from the mind in in scientific terms because it would make no sense and that's how it's easy for me to be before with the logic of science say they don't have an answer for this so it must be fake i'm like man that's deeper than that you know like there are things that actually manifest in your life that mm -hmm. has no scientific explanation and it's funny how scientists spin this by calling instinct instead of spirit let's say and nobody question or laugh at the idea of instinct like nobody knows where it comes from or matter like oh what is what is the the force that runs the world a scientist might be matter mm -hmm. you know i'm like yeah but where does matter come from and at the end of the day it, nobody has that answer because it's invisible it's in yeah. each one of us it comes in the combo you know and we cannot ignore it so i you know it's very interesting for me to to start you know thinking of all this stuff that before i used to not consider yeah yeah me neither i i didn't consider it at all in fact i laughed at it i thought it was very very silly stuff yeah it, it's it's quite it's quite fascinating because the more the more I look into this, and again, I, I'm a whole newbie with the the religion thing with with Christianity, uh, but when I when I look at the Bible and and you know the stories there, it's like such such deep and layered philosophy, and I appreciate so much about it. And then you look at science, and and the more I, I look at them, I kind of think that there might be a bit of a language thing going on here, where we're getting too caught up in semantics, where they're really trying to tackle the very very similar issues and and, and similar problems, and and mainly, what are we doing here? Where do we come from? What's the point of all this? And I think as soon as we can bring those two together, uh, it, it it actually, and this is what I've been trying to do for myself mentally is just bring those two things together, trying to parse my my limited understanding, but understanding of, of some sort of scientific processes, of some sort of scientific explanations, and saying, you know, is there any crossover between that and some sort of biblical version of what's going on? And I found that there's, there's actually a lot of parallels that could be drawn between them. Um, which was, yeah, for... Yeah. Yeah, no, for, for, you wanted to say something else? No, no, go, go. go. Oh, I'm out. I was going to say that, I was going to say that um, the way I see it, to that it makes sense for me, is that we have created a system that is religion to protect us from those monsters of the universe. And and that that uncertainty is kind of spiritual uncertainty and psychological uncertainty is kind of... Um, uh, um, dealt with with religion because religion is something that we created in time to to have this structure that makes us live better because when we are savages we saw that there was you know like that was not sustainable so in turn in in time each culture created a way to solve those mysteries. Mm -hmm. And I think science is very silly when it tries to compete with it, with this structure. And science should be what always was. And for some reason, we have advanced so much in science that we think in terms of competition to see who runs the world and not see it as something that they always work together because tools is science. And then the, the spiritual part of it use the tools to improve livelihood of everybody else so mm -hmm. i see it as as science pro, um, providing religion with information and with cures and with technology and with things and then the religion that we have is the one that uses science to its best potential yeah. otherwise we'll become numbers and nothing we, what are we gonna do be like matter obviously we're not that obviously we cannot even tell ourselves what to do what is good for us 
we have like a different diet every month, a different workout every time we go and see someone else doing it. So we realize that we can easily get lost with the information that science has provided. So I believe at the end for me, it's like that dialogue, like you're saying, is that balance between both things and they're both valuable. Mm -hmm. And then when I see, it's like I look at whatever structure different religious uh, kind of beliefs created in time. And then we see good aspects from that and bad habits are aspects of that. Mm -hmm. And then we get to select. And I think we are now better than ever in a position to reanalyze all this stuff. But if yeah. we keep cutting from history and we, if, we keep, if we keep stopping and, and alienating or thinking that because people in the past has had less science, that they're, they were less sophisticated is really, really um, a mistake, I believe. Because when, when I look at, when I go to Italy and I see what they created with the little science they had, is magnificent. And people go there because it's like a power that na only nature gives. Like either you spend money on nature or on art, pretty much. And if, if we see that a part of us is trying to reinterpret nature and bring the beauty and the essential part of the goodness of nature with the tools of science, that will be the best balance. And that, and, but we need to learn how to deal with our psyche because psychology is the latest of the sciences mm -hmm. and it's the newest like endeavor. Um, and, and I think we need to go back to the, to the, to that uh, philosophy of the mind, which is mm -hmm. psychology and see how we can benefit from both worlds. It's fascinating, you know, it's um, when you when you take on too much of a cold mechanistic view of the universe, suddenly it leeches all of the meaning out of life. And, you know, you can be treated like a number in a machine. Um, mm -hmm. And and the more I, the, from what I see anyway, and again, maybe this is my own limited understanding coming through, but the more they they try and when i say they the more the world or you know secular society and science and scientism tries to explain and come up for definitions of the universe the more that big question of god just won't go away but i should clarify just for myself anyway like religion and certain structures that were cultural structures maybe they were you know an invention by the culture I shouldn't say that I, or, or by society as a way to cope with the, the, the boogeyman, so to speak. I, I, I don't consider myself religious. You know, I consider myself Christian, which is kind of a little bit different. Um, what it comes down to is is actually a, a lack of structure in a certain way. Yes, there are sort of things that you you either do or don't do, but it's interesting how the shift has come away from uh, referring to rules as such and more or less being guided by your internal spirit. Because now I find that I'm, I, I have this compass that is guiding me in everyday life of, you know, and, and ultimately that compass is pointing towards truth. Now, it's not that I'm the holder of the truth. It's that that, that arrow is trying to point to it and is guiding me in that direction. And um, the one biggest truth that I found that I needed in my life was this, this idea of surrender and, and, and you know, submitting to, to something that was bigger than myself. What I found before through my selfishness, you know, I was giving in to, and to use a biblical term here, uh, into idolatry and, and sin, basically, because I was creating idols out of all these other things in my life, success, yes. money, all these things, and, and fixating on that. Whereas what I found where there was real beauty, good, truth, and virtue, I, that I, I through this process of, of coming, to, coming to Christ, basically, started mm -hmm. focusing on these other things, but that focus wasn't a conscious thing. It was that needle just going, here it is over here, move in that direction. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm finding that that has given life a whole new sense of meaning. I will say this, given the current situation, if I hadn't have come to this realization, and I'm, I'm only saying this for myself, because other people have probably got a better handle on it than me. But if I hadn't come to this realization for myself, I would be a basket case right now mm -hmm. in, in the current situation. I'd be no good to anybody. But there's something yeah. about it where it's just the fears gone it's like I, i'm putting giving it over and it's outside of my control um mm -hmm. and i i think that's what i think that's what christ's role was really uh, i think he was a disruptive figure in, in 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 history and a lot of people 
I, I think they they misunderstand. I'm not accusing you of doing this, by the way, but I'm just saying in general, no, no, pe- people people misunderstand. Uh, you know, when he when he came and, and he was here and, he, he, you know, his ministry was only for a short period of time, about three years. He he went head to head with the religious order of the day. And yes. His basic, revolutionary. Yeah, yes. revolutionary. And he was saying, you know, you know, to the to the say to the Pharisees and, and, and Sadducees, you know, you say this in your law, but I say to you this and this you know and and he's like you know how could you heal on the sabbath for instance you know that that's that's illegal and he said but listen if you had a sheep that was outside of its its bounds would you not go and rescue that sheep and put it back on the sabbath would you just let that go you know so i mean there are all sorts of parables and and things in there that i think are are directly applicable to our life and it's kind of a a more to me, the, the overarching theme is it's not a focus on the external and trying to line up what you're physically deciding in any given moment and in the day. It's a diving back within and trying to find that and making that realization that, and again, this is just what I believe. But No, but that's but, what he but, was all about. But yes. finding, finding the truth within you, the Christ within, so to speak, and, and living through that. So... It's um, and I'm not saying through that that I'm Jesus. That's not what I mean by that. But I'm saying that he <laughs> he he occupies that space. You know, no, no, that... definitely. And I think his revolutionary um, importance is that before we used to attribute like the power of the gods and the beauty of mm-hmm. the gods, and 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 we were like outside of ourselves. And I mm-hmm. think through him we found a better way to travel through life which is being more inside and more uh, like aware and in, and in relationship with the bigger uh, aspect of life but through the individual and that's how th- this christianity and society evolved like that because it was mainly let's go and see how our pleasures are not our best friends and before people used to allow pleasures even if they were bad just because they were essential to our you know senses to in- involve it and now we say let's sacrifice that to have a bigger like outlook and a bigger goal achieved and it's by going inside and simple and i think that's the best of the lessons of mm. course but it's amazing how much of today's society, for example, is lined up to hit those those buttons for you and, and just get you focused just on here and now and just on pleasure, you know? Mm-hmm. So here's the yeah. money, here's the here's the food, here's the sex, here's the drugs, here's here's that car, here's this thing, and, and it's like hitting that dopamine. Just go, 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 and go. And that's funny that because maybe my detachment from movies is that I don't have the need to have a saint – uh, to to idealize and like Batman or Superman or all these saints that are in movies that that's what people go to to dream into this powerful entity that then you get out of the movie theater thinking a little bit that you're in touch with it and then that brings out your Batman in you or or all this stuff and people are idealizing stars too like oh you know like such and such star like uh, we do lines for them and we have we have not stopped being religious even in these times we just transfer the energy to people that that are not the best role models to choose from that's why the idea of the you know of religion is so powerful because you have like things that evolve through centuries and and that is like filtered so whatever mm-hmm. remains is the big lesson and not a temporary thing mm-hmm. that someone came up with this um you know like elements to put in in a character and make people go wild mm-hmm. thinking about them and idealizing and worshiping them so in a way, once we realize how religious everybody is still to this day with all the technology, it's like, listen, are you sure you want to select this as your role model instead of that? Because that has been proven to work over through time. And now we have no way to say what's coming up. And it looks like it's degrading. It's like uh, yeah, it it's does. going not good. So, you know, like, yeah, it's very, as artists, we have to kind of think of all these things and play around and keep it open, you know, like that's. Uh, yeah, because art is also that. It's that expression of what we live. It's like part of our life. Mm. So, I don't know. It's very weird. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I could talk to you for hours and hours. I know. Caesar. 
though. You're a fascinating dude. I really have enjoyed this and I really appreciate your time. Um, I miss talking to you, man. Thank you, you for this. <laughs> that was cool. Well, Caesar, thank you so much for being on the Creative Endeavor. Thank you, Andrew. Well, I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Creative Endeavor podcast and a huge thank you to Cesar Santos for joining me once again. Now, if you're not already familiar with Cesar's work, you really should be. Find those links down in the description down below and I've included a link to his Instagram and his website. Caesar does some fantastic work as well as some tutorials teaching his amazing painting techniques. Now, if you like this episode, then please click that like button for me and leave me a comment down below. As always, you can find me on social media. Those links are below as well. But most important, please make sure you subscribe through my website at andrewtischler.com. Now, for a limited time, I've got an epic landscape tutorial for you at 30% off. I've put a link to that in the description down below. So if you want to take your painting skills a little bit further, in particular when it comes to painting landscapes, then make sure you check out that full tutorial. Thanks so much for stopping by. I've really enjoyed your company. I'll see you again very soon.